Hello everybody out there and welcome back to another Dark Avenger comic book review. This is officially episode 339 so you guys know what that means. Next week, episode 340, which is basically this week. We're a little late, sorry about that guys. But for episode 340... We return to our default re recording spot. We return to the kitchen. We return to the huge background. We return to the table. And we say goodbye to this room. But probably not forever. <clears throat> I'm sure one or two weeks we will be um, back here. Hey, we might even return to the other place where we do our recordings from time to time. So, who knows. Um, because this is late, we're going to give the weekly comp call a couple of hours before we have uh, upload it. So it will upload sometime on Sunday. You're probably seeing this on Sunday morning. Um, you know, falling behind two weeks ago and then having a huge list of comics both weeks kind of slowed us down. We're hoping that we'll get a lighter week soon uh, to help us catch up. I'm sure that we will be getting one <clears throat> sometime in May. Speaking of May, after this month, our ordering from Midtown will officially be done and we will be DCBS exclusive. Uh, I've already made our order for July, so for, so we've already set up our next two months worth of books. This might lead into something for Comic Frontline at some point uh, involving something else. I don't want to promise anything yet, but you might have something to look forward to in the month of June. <clears throat> but till then... Uh, and I'll be happy to have Mike back next to me instead of behind the camera while we do the digital stuff. But since we're in here this week, Mike's behind the camera. The books that were released this week were released on... April 27, 2016, the last week of April. And ironically, episode 340 will be for the first week of May. But anyway, digital books, Michael. Yes, starting with Independence Day, issue number two. Action-packed, awesome stuff. The aliens have new suits. And, um... We get to see the army fighting the aliens in this underwater ship or fallen ship. And one of the scientists actually wants them to bring back one of the bodies so they could examine it. <clears throat> Probably in case the aliens decide to come back, they'll have the 411 on the new armor. <clears throat> it's an action-packed, awesome fest. There's a lot of twists and turns. We get to see a giant uh, alien at some point. And it's just crazy stuff. Awesome stuff. I really enjoyed this issue. The artwork was really good as well. I apologize for the background noise. I'll check that in a moment. Okay, well, it's my book. All right, well, okay. well, show your book first, and then you can All pass right. it to me. Uh, Red Agent, uh, issue number four or five. This is really difficult doing both things. Well, no, now pull it away, and you can okay. start talking about it. So Red Agent is a team-up of um, Red, Ho uh, yeah. Red Riding Hood and Baba Yaba. As they're uh, trying to uh, find out uh, the whole thing of uh, what's going on at the uh, secret lair. And meanwhile, we find out that there's a secret experiment that's going on, which is the mother of someone who is uh, held captive in that machine. Uh, uh, Avril, I think her name was. And we find that out at the end of the book. But the whole thing is action-packed. I'm really looking forward to seeing how all this is going to conclude. Uh, in this because I'm really enjoying this series. It was really awesome. And actually, here's another book for mature readers. This actually set for Xenoscope. Uh, Saints Hollow, issue number two. Now, in this one, I could understand why it's for mature readers. There is lots of graphic stuff and lots of blood in this. And I think possibly one nudity. I'm not too sure. But anyway, so... They're going into this tunnel because they want to find out uh, what these demonic activities have been going on, known as uh, Satan's Hollow, which is that tunnel. So the girl goes back there. After she sees a recording of the guy who <clears throat> recorded the uh, tunnel, and she sees something uh, suspicious, like Satan. So she goes back there, and then there's these whole other stuff that happens. So in the end, one of her uh, friends goes to the Hollow, and actually, he ends up in a place where uh, it's actually hell. And he is actually a new pet to uh, Queen of uh, Hell and stuff. Yeah, like that. I, I don't know. I just It didn't appeal to me, this book, anymore. I, <clears throat> I was reading it. I did the first two issues, I believe. And then I might jump in with issue two. I just... I guess I have too much on my plate right now and I'm getting ready for DC Rebirth. Which sucks because I like to keep uh, the independence of DC... Even, but right now there's just a lot going on even in my personal life. So, unfortunately, that's kind of one of the books that I fell out of. But I did read it. I thought the art was good. And I'm interested to see where it goes. It just, it, it fell off for me and Michael just decided to run with it still. Ghostbusters and National <laughs> issue number four, Ortiz, or Melanie Ortiz, I should say, returns in this book. 
And uh, Janine gives her a side mission with Egon, who returns, along with uh, Kylie at, a, uh, at the Bronx, where the Ghostbusters are in Italy, or in France now, trying to uh, settle all these uh, entities that are happening. But as the issue continues, um, the girl who was with uh, Vinter, as assistant, she lets out the Povelia legend, or tries to. Uh, do that, but uh, lots of stuff happens in this, and uh, I did review it on Comic Frontline, but um, this was a really interesting book, and I'm waiting to see the next issue, see where that's gonna go, along with uh, other stuff. Bill and Ted Go to Hell, issue number three. This book was a fun read. First of all, Bill and Ted are awesome, and even going to hell, they make it even more awesome because the whole objective is to find Napoleon. Because they want to just, uh, like, you know, they, they want to know a little bit about him. But more or less, they just want to, they, they're just going on the adventures of getting him. There's lots of time travels that are going on with the robot Bill and Ted's that are in this as well. Mm -hmm. Along with their uh, their wife. But, oh, it is, it's a funny read. I don't want to give too much away because I want you guys to read this. I really am loving that book. So glad this is the end Conan the Avenger issue number 25, but it's not going to be the end because there's Conan Rises that is coming out in July. I don't know if I'm going to be reading that, but anyway, long story short, this last issue was just a whole thing where Conan doesn't appear until the last pages of the issue, who didn't see that coming, where there's a whole war going on, Conan tries to save the queen because of uh, all the, the, the sickness that's been going on. You know, that, that caused the war of Conan's against her team. And, ugh. I am just so glad it is done. Just no more after that. Faith, issue number four. This is all about, actually, this is the last issue. Because in July is going to be the first issue of the next volume, which will be the ongoing series. But this one is just investigating about the aliens and stuff. Because there's been, like, a whole bunch of uh, invasions that have been going on. Even though people know about Faith, but I don't know if that's gonna play into the first issue, where her the people who she knows is they know that she's Faith. Like I'm not, I'm not too sure, but um, it was don't like look a, at me, I haven't read it yet. <clears throat> I'm just saying it was a really interesting book, and I'm looking forward to the ongoing series because th this was all about the alien investigation, nothing too big or small, just the big thing, the ongoing series in July. So definitely looking forward to that. Now we're going into the big two. Starting with International Iron Man, issue number two. Done. I'm just, I'm not interested in it. It's just not holding my interest whatsoever. It's a nice book. Uh, the artwork doesn't really appeal to me. And to be honest, I'm pretty happy with Invincible Iron Man right now, even though we're going into Civil War II starting this week, <clears throat> next week. So, personally, um, I think this is a book I'm going to be skipping from now on. <clears throat> All right, then, Old Man Logan, issue number five. We were wondering what was next for Logan, and this issue explores uh, a moment where Logan actually asks uh, Aurora to, that, to leave. He wants to leave for a moment. He has some things he wants to um, <clears throat> do. And one thing that kind of threw me off with this book just a little bit was the un... Maybe it's because I read it a week ago and, I'm, and it's foggy in my head, but... There were moments where it was unclear if we were in the past, <clears throat> or in his past, or in the present. And we get flashbacks of after Wolverine killed the X-Men, how he tried to kill himself. And then he basically, because he couldn't die because of his healing factor, he killed off Wolverine. And we're back and forth between him in the past and in the present where he meets Maureen, who's a little girl in this timeline. But obviously he's from the future in a different world. So the little girl he meets in the present, I'm guessing, <clears throat> is the woman he fell in love with and married in his timeline in the future. So it was interesting. And then we find out at the end of the book that uh, a group of people who I'm not spoiling find out that Logan's back. And now they want to find him. And that's where the book's left off. Again, it was just very unclear where <clears throat> the past and the present were at times. But if you read it, I'm sure that you'll get the gist of where, where you're at. I thought it was really cool they threw in his uh, wife as a kid because he's back in time and in a different world. So I thought that was really cool. Venom Space Knight, issue number six. This was very interesting. So 
the whole thing, like I predicted in the last issue, was a huge plan uh, by Flash to basically trick uh, the person who stole the symbiote into thinking he got complete control over the symbiote. And now he was going to basically rule all of space. Uh, he comes back to Flash and, and basically he surprises him and says this was all a trick. The Venom costume goes back to Flash. However, if you guys remember, the reason the, the costume had to go back to its planet was to be cleansed because it was uh, worn by too many corrupt people. Apparently, being connected to this being starts to corrupt <clears throat> the Venom symbiote again. We actually get the uh, classic line, we are Venom, in this book. So... It's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, Venom actually, the symbiote itself calms itself down and says, you know, it's ready to move forward. It doesn't want to go backwards. However, inside of it, and also Flash gets a crew, which you got to read the book to find out. But basically, uh, of the people he's helped from issue one to now, one of those people from each of those places almost wants to join him. So the panda guy ends up joining him. The woman ends up joining him from a story arc back. <clears throat> and, and of course, the robot staying with him. So it's really interesting, and it's interesting now that the Venom symbiote now has a conflict within itself. It wants to be its old self, but it's still fighting because it's still pure enough to be its new self. It's, it's going to be a very interesting ride from here on out. Dark Knight 3, issue number 4. This was a heavy book. <clears throat> heavy on the heart. Superman's daughter. Superman goes there and tries to convince her that she's wrong and that they have to stop the Kryptonians and that the world needs to be saved, not destroyed. And I automatically hate <clears throat> Superman's daughter in the Dark Knight universe for an entire day she beats the crap out of Superman and Superman won't fight back because it's his daughter and Batman just tells um oh wow uh Carrie Kelly just to watch that they can't get involved and in the end Superman loses and I don't want to say he's dead because I don't think that they killed him but he's going to be trapped for a little bit of a uh, a little while where he's at and I hate his daughter and I hope to God that Wonder Woman comes back and lays the smack down on her daughter's uh, little tush tush because she she is now a hateable character because she thinks she's so high and mighty and that you know she's all Kryptonian but what she doesn't realize is she is half Amazon too so I can't wait to see what happens when Wonder Woman gets in and also Cara Kelly graduates from Robin to Read the book to find out. I'm loving Dark Knight. It's a really great series. Uh, obviously, I'm reviewing it digitally. I will be getting the collector's um, edition book in three weeks. Uh, I know they're skipping the month of July, so we won't have any books in July for Dark Knight, which is kind of upsetting, but I guess they want to kind of try to push it towards closer to the end of the year. But I'm excited to see where Dark Knight 3 goes. <laughs> Grayson issue number 19. This is leading up to something really awesome. <clears throat> Turns out Tiger basically double agents um, Dick. And he turns on Dick and he starts to defend Spiral. We learn that Maxwell Lord had more of a hand in Spiral than we first knew about. And Helena is now being controlled and it's going to be up to Dick to save her. I'm really excited to see where this goes. All right, now It's going to be concluded in the next issue. And now it's my book, starting with Carnage, issue number seven. This book, unlike the other Carnage books, I felt the dialogue was very heavy in this issue. Is he still on a boat? <clears throat> no, they're, they're no more on the boat. But there's, like, perspectives. There's, like, um, one of, uh, the agent of Dixon is just, uh, she <clears throat> finds, like, a new group after the whole uh, failed mission about her uh, men dying and everything. And the I forgot who they were. Uh, with Cleus Cassidy. So she's in a new group where she involves James Jameson and the other people. Uh, we find out Carnage gets more maniacal as I read this issue. And he asks this guy named Junior about the book that he got from Gleason. And what he learns about that book is really something else. And there's a guy who could actually help him more in Indonesia. Does that ring a bell? No. Jacona in Indonesia? Well, he has to go there, and it's funny because Agent Dixon is going to be going there also. Oh, wow. So uh, there might be a little bit of a confrontation there. And also, there was Eddie Brock who uh, was in there a little bit, but uh, you could find out for yourselves when you read the book. Spider-Woman issue number six. Now, Spider-Woman is trying to get back to her time because of, you know, that she has a child and everything. 
So she meets up with uh, Ellen Drew <coughs> in the 616 universe, Ellen Drew, <coughs> and they have like a little bit of a talk <coughs> about how he, how she can get back, and it's really just learning more about herself, basically, because we don't know if it's herself or anything else. So later on, after uh, Silk and Spider-Gwen are trying to find out how to get that watch back, they meet up with Reed, and this is the Richard Reed, Fantastic Four Kid Reed, who is creating the portal so they could go back in time, which they do, and then Spider-Woman just leaves them both behind because she has to get back to her child. Which is going to continue in Spider-Gwen. The, uh, what's it called? The, the a a Alpha? Mm -hmm. yeah. Spider-Woman. Spider-Woman, thank you. Spidey issue number five is my book of the week. Classic Spidey. Spider-Man going up against the Green Goblin, not the Hobgoblin. I don't know why it looks like the Hobgoblin in this issue. But anyway, he fights off against uh, the Green Goblin, who is Norman Osborn. After he helps with uh, Harry Osborn with his stuff and all that stuff and, and all the other things that are going on. It's basically an easy read because it took me less than 10 minutes to read. But I really love this book. But in the next issue, what's interesting <clears throat> is that he's going to be now going up against the Vulture with the help from Iron Man. Kind of like Civil War-ish related? I would say so. And lastly... Now zoom out. Star Wars issue number eighteen. I should be coming back with issue twenty. Yeah, I was <clears> gonna <throat> actually uh, get to that point. So in Star Wars, they're trying to find out uh, who's invading the prison. Like, uh, oh, let me turn a little bit. Yeah, like one of the robots is invading the prison. So it's up to Santa, Princess Leia, and Doctor Alpha. I'm, I'm really getting sick of her, really. Because she is getting darker and darker where I'm like saying, okay, either put her in jail or just take her down. I'm really getting sick of her, to be honest. And um, that, that, that's the whole issue. Oh, and also Han Solo and Luke Skywalker appear in this issue. And at the end of the issue, they want to help them. But lo and behold, on top of that Millennium Falcon is the person who is behind the whole uh, prison thing. So there's going to be an all-out war that's going to happen <laughs> in the next issue probably, but we'll see. So, let's get into the physical book, starting with you. Saga, issue 36. The final part to this chapter of Saga. I loved it. The Mark finally snaps out of whatever he is going on in his head. You've got Marco, who finally breaks into the prison to save his um, mother and daughter. Uh, but before that... They show a lot of the Mark trying to... Basically, he wants to kill the prince's son. Because <clears throat> he blames the prince for his girlfriend and uh, the brand's death, which is his sister. And Marco breaks into the prison. He sees his daughter for the first time. And it it's just... <clears throat> the picture says it all. It's amazing. So, in the end, the, the Mark finally realizes that um, <clears throat> he's... He's lost it, and he just, he needs, he's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, and she's like, go ask the one chick who calls you on your stuff. So there is somebody out there that can basically help him. His prisoners get freed, who are the news guys, um, the seal, and the other, and the walrus is saved, and the prince's son is also saved. And Marco ends up leaving with his daughter, however, his mother wishes to stay behind, and he, she just basically, she found her community, and she's making the biggest difference right where she's at now. Marco very tearfully leaves his mom behind. And um, we find out in the very end that Alana's actually pregnant again. Again? Huh. Wow. So, there's going to be another baby. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, indeed. I'm really loving Saga. I can't wait for it to return. All right. Uh, two books that I have is Sonic Universe, issue number 84. The uh, f weird, odd team-up of Dr. Eggman's team going up against the Nougat Twins and the uh, Witch Crafters, what are they called? Yeah, and the Witch Crafters. Because they have uh, Mel Sonic captive, so he has the teams of people who are uh, just going to get to the Nougat Twins uh, and the uh, Witch Crafters, so that way uh, he could get them back. Uh, really love the artwork. Like, the classic Sonic is, like, really just amazing in this issue. 
And Eggman's uh, team of uh, two people don't work out because they, it all gets a little bit uh, like arguing with each other. And as the arguing just ensues, Eggman gets into a deep hole. And we're going to see if Dr. Eggman's going to get out of there. But probably he will because, you know, he, he has ways of escaping from stuff like this. I mean, come on. It's going to happen. I mean, this is what? Part two or four of Eggman's dozen. He's going to survive. But if his teammates don't uh, shape up or anything, they're going to lose. But we'll find out in the next issue what happens. Street Fighter X G.I. Joe, issue number three. And uh, in this issue, uh, I'm just going to give who won what. You, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you who won what. I just want By the way, this is part of our mail time, our, our whole weekly haul video. We got the physical copy. Yeah, I'm just going to give you guys... Uh, like just the artwork, which is drawn phenomenally. And basically, it's Street Fighter versus G.I. Joe characters, and the people who made in the end were Jinx versus Rufus and Guile versus Bison. Now, I have a funny feeling in the end, you know who it's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be Jinx <coughs> versus Bison because, hello, Street Fighter X G.I. Joe, you can't have Street Fighter versus Street Fighter, right? So it's going to be Jinx that's going to defeat Rufus because... I mean, no, no offense to Rufus fans, he's no better than her, mm. to be honest. Gal versus Bison is going to be interesting, but you know it's going to be Bison because they're pushing him to be the whole big bad wolf and all that other stuff in this book. But I want to see Gal win. But anyway, really awesome issue. I'm looking forward to seeing who's going to make it to the finals, even though it's going to be a predictable <laughs> win. Maybe not. We'll see. Because uh, Bison Cycle Crusher got destroyed by... Um, the G.I. Joe, uh, one of the ninjas, I forgot. Amazing Spider-Man issue number 11. Thank the Lord the Scorpio story arc is officially over. About And time. that's it. But we do learn also that uh, Doc Ock is moving his plans forward <clears throat> ASAP. Um, he said he's ready for his superior return. Superior. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. Don't tell me Superior Spider-Man's coming back. Oh, I doubt that. Oh. I liked it. I just don't want to see Peter Parker. Either. No, I, I I think what's going to happen is we're going to get like a Superior Doc Ock or something. Okay, so then that'll be something. I'm just glad this is over. Next issue, I believe we start getting into Civil War. This is a very weird read. All new Wolverine issue number seven. The guest stars continue as Squirrel Girl guest stars. And apparently... A squirrel dad went missing, and Squirrel Girl basically enlists the help of Laura in the dead of the morning, the early morning. <clears throat> I don't even know what time it is, like 3 o'clock or something? I forgot, I don't think they mentioned what time it was. But basically, she asked Laura for help to find the squirrel dad, because Laura is basically Wolverine. We find out that this rich little boy has a squirrel. He ended up stealing the squirrel and sticking it in a box. <laughs> Squirrel goes back to his family. Laura learns a lot. There is one good part in this book, and that's at the very beginning where Laura is dreaming, and she sees Wolverine. So I'm guessing Ghost Wolverine will be visiting Laura from time to time. And Laura basically learns a valuable lesson, and she basically tells uh, the little girl, whose name completely escapes me at the moment, that um, this is her home from now on, and she won't leave her again. So the bond that possibly will be broken at some point. But I thought it was a really good... Other than the Squirrel Girl thing, it was a really nice issue. It was a random, I guess, transition issue. Next issue, I believe we start with the Civil War stuff. I am giving you guys a warning right now. Because I've seen this. I've noticed this. With a lot of the Marvel books. As Civil War glides <clears throat> into certain books. <clears throat> All New Wolverine in the month of July is going to be a 5 dollar book <clears throat> mm -hmm. any book that reaches the five dollar marker and i catch it that book will be digital for that month and that's all fair. i'm saying i and i think everybody out there unless you want almost all of your marvel books um to be five dollars it's time to start sending marvel a little message and not buying their $5 books. $5 is too much. And now they're basically using the excuse of Civil War to buff up books to $5. First it was the issue number ones. 
Now it's the tie-ins to Civil War. Then do anniversary that episode Superman of came out or anything. Issues. I'm just saying, guys. I think it's time we, as readers and fans, take a stand and say no to five four ninety nine, even five ninety nine. I think. Well, five ninety nine would be pushing it, don't you think? I think that the four ninety nine price tag is pushing it, but Superman Wonder Woman issue twenty eight. <clears throat> Superman finally... Wonder Woman found out about Superman. So now Superman basically explains to her what's going on. She obviously asked, do you love me? Gee, I wonder what the answer is. Well, the page gives it And away. then Lois and Steve Trevor reach out to Superman and Wonder Woman saying that um, there's a person who's claiming to be Superman, has all of Superman's powers, looks like Superman, and that him and Wonder Woman should check it out. We all know it's the Eradicator, but for right now... Eradicator's trying to break free, thinking that Superman is the fake and he's the real Superman. Wait, that's how he was then? Mm -hmm. Superman, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Superman doesn't realize this is the Eradicator. It's not because of his solar flare. Mm -hmm. So he goes to Ulysses, who's in the same uh, place, <clears throat> and asks Ulysses <clears throat> if he can help him out with the solar flare. Explain maybe, maybe that's how Eradicator came to be. We all know that's not true, though. Ulysses gets free because the Eradicator breaks free and all the power goes out for a time. And a fight between Superman and Ulysses happens. Superman ends up losing the battle a bit because <clears throat> Ulysses realizes that he's weak. And um, it just ends with the Eradicator getting away. And Ulysses basically laughing at the fact that he knows now that Superman is dying. To be continued in the next Superman book, which I believe is Superman Batman in two weeks. Or I could be wrong, and I have to look at this week's books again. Sinestro, issue 22 of 23. Next week, next month's book is the final issue. Ceranic is the leader of the Sinestro Corps. We find out that some Sinestro Corps people are trying to turn on the Sinestro Corps and basically bring it back to its original ways, its dark ways. The Red Lanterns are back. <clears throat> and it's not the Red Lanterns that Guy Gardner was uh, leading. This is They're back to the dark, their dark ways, and I don't think Atrocitus is leading them anymore. Uh -oh. <clears throat> but they basically want to take revenge on the Sinestro Corps for what they've done to them in the past. Uh, Ceranic <clears throat> and Sinestro kind of butt, butt heads a little bit because she wants the Sinestro Corps to be like the Green Lantern Corps, and everybody else kind of doesn't like that she's helping out their enemies. And it's like, that's not what we do. We help everybody. And then Sinestro's like, you know what? Um, let's find the Green Lantern Corps then. And she's like, why are you doing this? He's like, you're my daughter. And you're the leader of the Sinestro Corps. All you have to do is command the Manhunters. And they will go on a galaxy-wide search. Galaxies-wide search to find the Green Lanterns. And she's, she wills it. And then in the end, we find out that the Red Lanterns will be aiming for the Sinestro Corps in the next issue. Oh, there's Atrocitus. Mm -hmm, but I don't think he's the leader. It looks like Atrocitus is kind of being, is one of the mindless um, Red Lanterns again. Oh. We'll have to wait and find out in the final issue of Sinestro. Starting next episode, actually, we'll be getting into those final episodes. There's a lot of 52s coming. Mm-hmm. Justice League 49, the penultimate issue to the Dark Side War. Lex Luthor's back. The baby is coming and comes in this issue. Um, Jessica Cruz is still fighting on the inside of Power Ring to break free of Power Ring with the help of Cyborg. We get the Anti-Monitor versus Lex Luthor. Barda goes back to Apocalypse to save um, all of the prisoners from um, Darkseid's tyranny while Mr. Miracle chooses to stay behind and help the Justice League. Um, we find out that the baby is a weapon. We don't know who the baby's father is, but it isn't Owlman's son. And Owlman actually knew that, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and we do see the death of the Anti-Monitor. And, yeah, I'll show this one. The baby's there, and the fun begins. Mm -hmm. Fun really And, begins. uh, let's just spoil this. Steve Trevor comes back, and with the control, under the control of Grail... He ends up destroying the Anti-Monitor, and now, what's next? Everything's thrown to hell. Superman returns to his normal self after using the Solar Flare again to get rid of all of the Apocalypse Dark Energy that's been destroying his cells. But we all know where that's leading. That's leading, basically, to the death of Superman anyway, of the New 52 Superman. Scott Snyder's last book, because Issue 52 will not be written by Scott Snyder. And what a way to say goodbye, Issue 51 of Batman.
Batman, the power in Gotham goes out as he goes on patrol against um, Alfred's better judgment. We get to see the new Batmobile that has like a hologram program that could hide it. But basically the power goes out. And I love the Inspector Gordon scene where he's talking to Batman. Somebody comes out going crazy, you know, saying, you know, Ar the Arkham inmates uh, have gotten out because the power's out. And he actually just says, I'm not going to turn around because you're already gone. Just be careful. He turns around and he laughs and he walks off. Batman gets to Arkham, but just in time, uh, the new head of Arkham actually has a failsafe. So all the inmates, before they can even fight Batman, end up um, imprisoned again. So Batman now has to, it, Batman thinks that the power outage is, is the cause of someone. It's not Arkham, so he goes undercover with the Court of Owls, and it's not the Court of Owls, and everybody says the same thing. Not tonight, uh, not now, um, soon, but not tonight. So it's not the Court of Owls, so he goes to check out Penguin and Black Mask. It's not them. Again, not tonight. He continues looking, and we, he confronts somebody that we saw in the very beginning when we were in Zero Year of him as Batman. Uh, a person basically that Batman's changed, his, his life was changed because of Batman. He's now on the up and up. He's not part of gangs anymore. He searches all throughout Gotham and sees nothing. And then it turns out the blackout was actually a, um, a natural occurrence. A, a naturally occurring, I believe, um, tremor, tremor under Gotham. Knocked the grid off and the power comes back on. And he's like, I'm just going to stay out a little longer to make sure everything is okay. And the tremor wasn't caused by anybody. But in the end, basically, all the villains are not ready tonight to fight or to to take advantage of Batman. And Batman, it just basically, it's a perfect send-off for Scott Snyder. I really enjoyed this issue a whole lot. And I'm looking forward to Scott Snyder's run on All-Star Batman. Yep. And with that, that's it for this review, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully we'll try to catch up as soon as we can with these reviews. Back to the camera go. That's right. So until next time, everybody, links in the description below. Check them out in your spare time. Uh, feel free to comment below your thoughts on any of the books you see here. Likes, dislikes, agree, disagree. And until next time, everybody, take care. Keep reading. Keep collecting. Don't forget to check out Comic Frontline. We are your number one source for comic-related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. And I'll see you guys really soon in the next video. Bye, everybody.